Hi, this is Stu, and of course we're at the beautiful Purple Valley, and this time I'm again here with Deepika Mehta, and she is, I mean, I've been watching her, the strength of her core, so we've talked her into a little core workshop for us, and I think she's going to sh show me up here a little bit, so I've got dragged in front just to show you the things that can go wrong as well, I imagine. So um, this hopefully you can then integrate into your practice, and it will make things a lot safer and give you that stability that you need in so many postures. So I'm just going to sort of hand it over to Deepika and she's just going to call me in when she needs me. Super. Go for it. Um, so I'm going to start on the, on the mat. We're just going to try to find the position to really fire the muscles so that every time you jump back in your Surya Namaskar to a plank position to a Chaturanga, you're keeping the integrity of the core and also the pushing action of the scapula, which to me feels like how you can really get the sense of bracing in the abdominals as you start the practice. So we're going to just come into like a cat position. Um, make sure your index finger and thumb is kind of making a 90 degree angle. Press through the index finger. Take a moment. Allow the scapula, the shoulder blades to dip down towards the ground and then try to push away. So do this a couple of times. Allow the scapula to move towards each other and then push away. Do this one more time, dip, and then push away. Make sure your shoulders are away from the ear, so you're really also activating the side, the, the lats. Now keeping the action of the scapula of pushing away, you're just going to try to isolate the pelvis to find the right position here. So again, on the inhale, let the pelvis curl in. Sorry, do the opposite. And then on the exhale, tuck. One more time, inhale, release, let the belly soften. Exhale, curl in. Do this one last time. Inhale, see how that softens the belly. Exhale, tuck in. Now try to join those two things to find the correct position in the cat position. So push through the, the scapula, shoulders away from the ears, and then tuck in the tailbone. Try to really feel how that activates your abdominals from the inside rather than just creating the shape from the outside. So stay with that for a moment. Keeping those actions of pushing through the scapula, curling in the tailbone, add the legs into the picture. So take your right leg out, really activate the quadricep, pull up the kneecap, take the left leg out, push through the scapula, curl in the tailbone, keep the legs really tight and strong, and hold that. You're going to try to hold it for 20 seconds. Keep pushing, keep tucking in, really feel the internal work of the abdominals. Feel the internal work of the legs, the glutes, and then release. Take a few moments, just relax in child's pose, let the belly soften. And then come up, we're going to try to find the same position in a low plank, which is kind of similar in shape to a chaturanga. So lie on your belly. Maybe make tight fists out of your hands. Keep the elbows in line with the shoulders. Again, start by first finding the pushing action instead of just sinking. So again, push through the scapula. Feel like you're taking your forearms through the earth. Keep that strong st sense of grounding through the earth. Keeping that with the upper body, curl in the tailbone, lift up, step the right leg, take the left knee kneecap off the ground, tuck in, lift up, and really hold it there with a continuous sense of pushing the earth away from you. Feel the sense of pushing away from gravity. And then again, after 10 seconds, take a few moments, release, relax the belly, and just take a few moments here. And then come up. We're just going to try out something like a partner workout, just to see if you're keeping that sense of strength internally or just creating the shape from the outside. So can I get some help from you, Stu? <laughs> We're going to do a small little drill here. And we tried this earlier, and it, it didn't <laughs> go 100% right. <laughs> so Stu is going to be really protracted in the scapula, shoulders away from the ears, really curling under the tailbone, so the abdominals are really activated. Legs really nice and tight, keeping the glutes, the quadriceps firing. And then I take a moment here, lift the legs off the ground. 
without telling him, I'm going to just let go of one leg. And he's going to try to keep the stability through the core. So I'm going to try to surprise him. And then I want you to show Stu that if you were not using your core, what would happen? Yeah, so his lower back would start arching. His whole body would be sinking down. So here he's really activating, curling a little bit more. Yeah, that's it, a little bit more. That's it, and then release. So you can see if you're not firing the muscles enough, there's this tipping down towards the ground. Mm. Did you it's feel hard like work. you have? Yeah, you really have to work hard yeah. to actually keep that stability. Yeah, it's not as easy as you made it look. I looked, made it look very easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of hard work for sure. So we're going to just add in one more drill here. Going to lie on your back. Going to lie on your back. Shoulders away from the ears, long neck. Again, find this tilt of the pelvis so that the lower back is imprinted on the ground. There's no space for me to take my hand through. Rather than letting the lower back arch, which makes the abdominal soft, you're going to again press down. Lower back totally imprinted. Now, keeping that position, you bring your knees to a 90 degree angle. Feel like you're balancing a hot cup of tea on your left knee without losing the lower back imprinted on the ground. You're going to try to drop the right leg down. The lower back stays imprinted, bring it back up. Left leg down, lower back stays imprinted, bring it back up. Again, I'm really having to use my core so that my lower back doesn't arch every time I take my legs down. You can do this a couple of times, really feeling the activation, the stability of the core. Try to really concentrate constantly on imprinting the lower back, constantly activating the abdominals. Once you can do this a couple of times, maybe both legs together. So down, a lot of control, and up with a lot of control. Lower back stays imprinted, down, and up. So just watch what not to do, which is down and up. Constantly keeping exactly the same position of the pelvis and the spine as the legs move. Once you get this position a couple of times, maybe you can straighten your legs, pull up the kneecaps, take the legs down to the point where you can keep your lower back imprinted on the ground. Once you reach your maximum point, lift the scapula off the ground, reach with your fingertips towards your feet and really stay with that position, keeping the lower back imprinted. Do that for a few seconds and then hug your knees into the chest. Maybe just relax the belly, relax the shoulders. We'll try this position from another perspective so you can keep your feet on the ground. This time inhale, exhale, lift the shoulder blades off the ground, reach with your fingertips, add the legs in. Keep the lower back imprinted, either stay with your hands here or here or if you're really strong, take your hands behind you, really straighten and lock the elbows. And then again, after a few seconds, seconds, hug your knees, relax the belly, soften everything. Take a moment, maybe rock up. You want to try the next one with me? I'll try with you. Yeah, okay, Where do you cool. want me? S next to you or yeah. you want to first? No, next to me. So we're going to do a small little core workout, which I'm going to get Stu to do with me. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah? Okay. So. 10 repetitions, I'll show you the first one that we're going to do 10 repetitions of and then the second one 10 repetitions of. Okay. Yeah? Okay. We don't want to go for speed, we want to go for quality, really precise each movement. Just <laughs> you keep looking that way and then we'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to call this position hollow body, keep the lower back imprinted, tight line from the tips of the toes, elevate your shoulders, so really reach the shoulders towards the ears. Now exhale, come up. Hmm and hold. Feel like you're squeezing your knees towards the chest. Feel like you're reaching the block towards somebody that's really far away from you. So no, no touching the feet as you come up? No. That's what I did wrong. Right really there. reach, squeeze the midline again. Inhale, 
Exhale up, sharp, hold. You can breathe out through the mouth or in ujjayi breath. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. One last. Inhale. Exhale. Hold it there. Really touch, touch, touch. Hug your knees into the chest. Reach, reach, reach. Shoulders away from the ears. And then release. Mm. How is that? Yeah, I can feel that working. Good. Strong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I could see my, my knees weren't coming. You're getting yeah. nice and flush. They yeah. won't come up here. Yeah. But yeah. I think also in the core, one of the things that like, you know, which I feel some people don't have and I feel like I have the, you know, you can have an advantage. Yeah. Is also I have pretty open hip flexors. Yeah. So if you have flexible hip flexors. It doesn't it get in the way. This so position much. becomes easier. Yeah. Because I have, you know. Some my give. muscles, yeah. yeah. Also the hip flexor strength, I think, rather than just abdominal yeah. strength. So, you and know. that's so important for all the jump throughs, isn't yeah. it? And everything, getting yeah, the knees getting to the chest. Yeah, getting that really tight hugging feeling, yeah. like a bracing. Yeah. So the second drill we're going to try. They get easier or they get harder? You're going to love it. I'm, <laughs> I'm quite sure of that. I'm okay. suffering for you guys. I hope you realize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this position also, uh, the hollow body position that we did, it yeah. comes from gymnastics. The tuck position is very relevant for the Ashtanga practice because the tighter you can get that tuck, the easier the jump backs. Yeah. Also helps in Navasan to lift. All of those positions would really get much easier if you got the tuck really yeah. tight. Second position, it's, it's called an L-sit. So you can keep your legs, because um, it's coming more from a gymnastic perspective. We're going to emphasize on really keeping the legs very tight, toes pointed. Okay. You can bring your hands like in a dandasan position. Keeping the legs tight, you're going to lift just the left leg up and down. Right leg up and down. Feel how that activates. Do you feel like your core works every time you lift up? Yeah. And back. Few more of this and down. Up and down one more. Up and down. Both together. Lift <laughs> and down. Again. Lift and down. Lift, breathe out, down. Two more. Lift, down. One last. Lift, down. Now keep the hands in that position close to the hips. Hips up, shoulders away from the ears, down, again. Hips up, shoulders down, three more, breathe out, two more, down, one last, and down. Does that feel good? That's good. Okay. One last, we're going to join the dots. Yes. Which is lift. Left. Down. down. Yeah. Okay. So obviously the quadriceps are going to have to work pretty hard. Yeah. So we'll just do one repetition, release. Again, one repetition, release. If you feel like you're fine, we can do five continuous. I'm sure I'll be fine. Okay, so <laughs> let's go for it. Yeah. Are we pointing the feet? Um, pointing is, is, I feel, is better because then your quadriceps okay. are really getting activated. Okay. So we're going to do five of these. Yeah? Yep, go five, for it. Five, six and go. One. Down. Two, down, three, down, four, down, last one, five, hold, one, two, three, four, five, and down. Was Whew. that good? Yeah. You enjoyed <laughs> it? Yeah. Okay. Good work. Last one to finish it off. Okay. Yeah? Do you need okay. me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do... Uh, a small little drill that could help in Pincha Mayurasan for nice. arm balance. So, um, if you have socks or if you have a t-shirt or a towel, that's a good idea. Something. I'll just demonstrate it one time. I'll keep it out your way for a minute. So, you can keep socks, t-shirt, towel, whatever works. Let's try it first from a high plank position. So, keep your toes pointed, get a nice good high plank. Elbows, um, wrist, elbow, shoulders in line. Make sure you don't let the shoulders move towards the ears. Pull them away. Push through the scapula. Activate the abdominals. So really keep that position. Find the high plank. 
You're going to try to feel like you're moving the armpits towards the hips. You're moving the hips towards the armpits. So up and back. Up and back. <sighs> up and back. Up and back. Let's just see a few more reps, so it didn't really miss the detail. Oh, yeah? <laughs> 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 okay, let's do it together. I hope this is good and slidey. Try out first ones. So here? Yeah. And Shoulders away from so ears. ears. Straight legs, is it? Yeah. That's it, perfect. Yeah. Keep your feet together, use your abdominals, yeah. armpits, that's it, perfect. Oh, yeah, the sliding back is difficult, yeah. Again, squeeze, hold, and back. Yeah, so let's do five together. Okay, here we five, go. Five, six, and go. Up, and back. Up, and back. Exhale. Up, and back. Two more. And back, one last. And hold in there. And back, and release. Nice. Nice. Okay. So that would help if you're doing like a forearm balance. Yeah. So from here, shoulders away from ears, push through the scapula, curl in the tailbone, strong legs. Again, pull, keep pulling, and back. Again, the same thing, pull, lean, 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 and back. Ah, and then we're going to stop with that one. Yeah. So from there, you would carry on up, basically. You would you'd get your hips in that position, and you've got all that contraction, and then you just continue raising the legs all the way up. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Good one. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Hope you uh, enjoyed it. I hope you joined in with us as well and didn't just let me do all the work <laughs> and <laughs> try it out. Because particularly a lot, it's so, it helps not only with uh, the jump throughs, jump backs, but also having a strong core helps with the back bending too, doesn't it? It just yeah, helps protect the totally. low back. And I feel like from acum itself, yeah. if instead of finding the shape, yeah. if you find a bit of that action right. the in, in the abdominals, I feel like your whole practice feels much more stable yeah. and strong rather than dumping your weight into you know, into your lower joints, back. your lower back, yeah. or you know, not having that internal connection. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Thanks, Deepika. And hope you enjoyed that. And uh, catch us because next we're going to be filming a backbend workshop, which you'll get along the way. So uh, join us for that too.